Hey guys, welcome to the first video of my channel. My name is Tim Papa, and today we will be busting the top four coronavirus conspiracy theories. Now, before we begin, let's talk about how to name the virus because there are actually so many names of the virus. Okay, here's the answer. The official name of the coronavirus is SARS-CoV-2, and the disease is called COVID-19. Why can't we just call it the Chinese virus? I mean, it's totally fine to name the virus after its origin, right? We did the same thing to Ebola and to the Spanish flu. <sighs> well, Joe Mama, you see, there's actually a difference. Ebola is the name of a river, not an entire ethnicity. And for the Spanish flu, the first confirmed case actually came from Kansas. So according to your logic, should we rename it to the Kansas flu or even worse, the American flu. Well, yeah. <sighs> okay, um, we shall continue this video. The first one on our list is not even a conspiracy theory, but because so many people falsely believe it, then we need to address it. When the pandemic first started, people believed that the virus jumped to humans because some guy in China randomly ate a bat. However, this is extremely likely to be false. Um, you've probably seen this picture before, but I hate to break it to you, this picture was not even taken in China. In fact, it was taken at a Pacific Island nation back in 2016. <laughs> 16. By studying the genetic sequence of the bat, most scientists believe that the virus actually jumped from a bat to a different animal, such as a snake or a pangolin. And because wet markets are super unsanitary, the virus can pass from one animal to the other through urine or feces, and whoever is handling those can get infected. The second conspiracy theory is definitely the most trendy one right now. And the basic idea is that the coronavirus was actually released from a laboratory in Wuhan. And it was either released as a bioweapon to disrupt the world's economy, or it was released accidentally. I have to admit that these are some pretty reasonable claims, because the one thing that humans do the best is to fabricate a scenario so that we can be less scared of the unknown. Now, the biggest problem is that there is no evidence that supported this theory. In fact, more and more scientists and politicians are refuting this theory because almost all research done on the virus was proving that it was not man-made. Don't just take my word for it, you know, I am a stupid high school student, but let's look at some real research done by credible sources. In March 2020, Nature Medicine published a research paper written by a coalition of American, British, and Australian doctors who examined the genome of the virus. They concluded that there are no traces of genetic manipulation. Also, the novel coronavirus contained optimized protein structures that were previously unknown to researchers, which is another proof of the natural selection theory that the paper supports. Hold on, man, hold on, man. I know you're being all scientific and stuff, but how do you know that these researchers are not lying about their research? Well, Joe Mama, this time you're not wrong because I really can't prove anything. Even researchers can't say that they are 100% right. However, I do believe that scientists have a lower incentive than politicians to lie, unless they are sponsored by big companies, of course. And you know, if you don't trust the researchers, I'm sure you can trust the US intelligence. Last Thursday, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence said that the intelligence community concurs with the wide scientific consensus that the COVID-19 virus was not man-made or genetically modified. I mean, the evidence is there. If you don't want to believe it, it's okay. Natural selection will do the work. The next two theories will probably be a little bit absurd, but because a lot of people actually believe them. So for the sake of our society, we will address them on this channel. The deep state conspiracy theory is essentially the idea that there is this secret organization in the government that made the virus and is trying to spread it all over the world to achieve their goals. Interestingly, people like Dr. Faki, Bill Gates, and even Bill Clinton and so many other big names have been accused of participating in this plot. One proponent of this theory is Rush Limbaugh, a radio host who received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Trump 
He argued that the coronavirus is a political weapon used to bring down Trump and to mess up the 2020 election. Now, do I have any evidence to prove that this theory is completely a hoax? No, because this deep state conspiracy theory is so imaginative that there is really no evidence to prove or disprove it. There is recently a viral Facebook post about how Dr. Faki is pushing away certain treatment options because he invested $100 million in Bill Gates' COVID-19 vaccination research. However, this statement is false because there is no evidence to prove that Dr. Faki is financially invested in the vaccine. For Mr. Bill Gates, some people believe that he engineered the virus to depopulate the globe. Now, I don't really know what to say because I can't prove it or disprove it because I don't have any audio recording of Bill Gates saying that he's gonna kill everyone in the world. But we do know that Bill Gates pledged to spend a quarter of a billion dollar to invest in a vaccine and people are sending him death threats for doing that. So I guess only time will tell who's right. Okay, now that we're done with the political stuff, um, we can talk about some fun conspiracy theories, like how people believe that 5G signal is causing the pandemic. What? Yeah, sounds stupid, right? But people are actually burning down 5G towers in UK, in Belgium, and all over the world. There are two beliefs of this theory. The first one being that the novel coronavirus simply did not exist and everyone's symptoms are caused by 5G frequencies that is disrupting our body and damaging our cells. The second belief is that 5G frequencies can weaken our immune system, which will make the coronavirus much more contagious and deadly. To address this theory, let's first talk about why a 5G network is safe. So 5G is a kind of radiation, and there are two kinds of radiation, ionizing and non-ionizing. Ionizing radiation includes X-ray and UV ray, and they are pretty dangerous if you were exposed to them for a long time. On the other hand, non-ionizing radiation is harmless because they are simply too weak to break any chemical bonds. And that includes everything from the sun, to visible lights, to your Wi-Fi, and to 5G frequency. There is one exception, which is the microwave, because it is intentionally made to resonate with water molecules. Which means that if you were somehow stuck in the microwave, you will be boiled to death. Yeah, not a good way to go. <laughs> so scientifically speaking, 5G definitely did not cause the pandemic. Also, if 5G radiation is the real virus, then it shouldn't be contagious and it couldn't spread to countries without 5G signal. As of January 2020, only 34 countries in the world have 5G towers. But as of now, more than 187 countries slash territories have confirmed cases. Which means that 5G signal is definitely not the cause. Well, how to explain the fact that places with more 5G towers are more severely impacted by the virus? Um, because the places you're talking about with more 5G towers are big cities with higher population density, so... Well, how do you explain this? There's literally a coronavirus symbol and a 5G tower on the new 20 pound note. <sighs> you are.